Good morning world. Today it's my 19th day of climate fast beginning now. Last night it was less cold because the skies were cloudy. It was minus three and together with me there were some 200 people sleeping out in the open. For the safeguard of the sensitive, fragile ecology of the mountains in Ladakh, the glaciers, the unique indigenous tribal cultures. And I'm feeling a little better now after two days of low energy, so I'll share some ideas with you. You know, we have done so much damage to nature in the name of development and growth. Our current concept of growth and development is so anthropocentric, so human obsessed that we have decimated everything else, all living beings, all non-living beings that share this planet with Earth. So, let me share a crazy idea. How about having nature representatives in our parliaments that can advocate for nature? The idea may shock you, but let me put it this way. Do you know that before 1920s, idea of giving suffrage or voting rights to women was shocking to people around the world? It was only in the early 1900s and finally in 1920 when US passed the law for women's voting rights that this became a normal, natural thing today. We can't even think of women not being able to vote today. Similarly, having colored people, blacks for example, to vote or run for office was just unthinkable. And after a struggle of some hundred years, finally it was in 1965 that US passed the law of all colors could vote. Today, it's just unthinkable that a black person, because of his color, would not be allowed to vote. So what's next? Can we take the idea of inclusion to the next level and give nature a voice to have nature representatives? And tomorrow, it might be unthinkable for us to think that nature was never represented in our parliaments of the past. Today, it's all human-centric. For example, Delhi, with an area of 1,500 square kilometers, has seven MPs. And Ladakh, with 60,000 square kilometers, has only one MP because Delhi has 20 to 30 million people and Ladakh has only 300,000 people. But Ladakh is not just these 300,000 people. It's a lot of vast wild nature, glaciers that we depend for our lives. All this is not represented in our parliaments for pro policy making. So how about giving such representation based on the area and sensitivity of nature and not just human population alone? And why only Ladakh? All over the world, shouldn't the elephants and the birds and the bees and the grasslands and glaciers and trees have a voice in our parliaments? for making policies that make sense for them also. Of course, elephants and trees cannot speak nor choose representatives. We can help them with nature advocates. Mechanisms could be worked out on electing them, but the idea is giving them voice and true inclusion and actually true democracy will be when they also get included. In the end, I would just say that places with fragile ecosystem like Ladakh need to be given more attention. Today, not to speak of giving voting rights to nature, 
even the people, the indigenous tribal people have no voting rights. And sixth schedule is one provision in the Indian constitution that gives them autonomous councils, little assemblies to make laws for themselves and manage these ecosystems as they see fit for their future. And that's why people are demanding six schedule for Ladakh and democracy restoration for Ladakh, as was promised by the current government in India two times in two elections. And we still hope that our leaders will stand by their words and keep their promises. Thank you very much and have a great day, Jule and Jai Hind.